on a bezel ring as this is a red synthetic cubic 8x6 oval ring I'm going to show you something that's very very interesting and sometimes neglected with some people who are setting stones as you can see on this bezel just want to get focused here that there is the displacement of metal being done when the hammering is taking place if you can see on the outside rim there is a little line of metal coming off from the bezel wall that's very very normal why because when you're hitting it metal can go in one of four places to the right of the hammer hit to the uh, left to the right over the bezel itself to hold the stone and the edge and you could see that all the way around the bezel wall and when this is going to be hitting the metal will be holding the stone in place but you must not really trying to get in focus here when I'm looking through the back of the camera you have to make sure that the inside bezel is nice and sharp clean bright as in bright cutting and this is what I'm going to be showing you right now and this I'm going to cut around the inside of the bezel wall with my right sided graver and you can see how it's formed the right side is going to be doing the cutting extremely sensitive very careful cutting the left side has a small facet on it I think this one has it just a bit but I don't want that left side to be coming in contact with the stone my main concern is to have the right side having a nice clean cut all the way around is an important extremely as you can see on this ring it looks pretty rough looking and even though you're going to be using a pumice wheel flat 180 grit it's not going to give you a nice clean cut on the inside only with a bright cutting tool an onglet number two I use highly polished on one side only using I think it's called a 1200 grit but my earlier days was called a 4-0 polishing paper and this is how it looks 4-0 polishing paper Norton was the manufacturer in those in these days so let me put my thumb guard on I don't want to be cutting my finger now I'm going to start cutting I'm going to do two, two things my hand is going to cut and cu uh, go around the bezel wall towards the left as that I'm doing that I'm going to be turning the ring around towards the right clockwise so you can have a nice gentle cut so let's start now cutting it now remember I got my camera right beside my left arm which it impedes me to holding the ring uh, properly but I'll do the best I can here we go can you all see that little line of metal being lifted up that is what you're aiming for you know you know, already you can see a bit of a difference in the appearance of the inside of the wall let me continue on I do it in small bursts of cutting about I will take about four or five six cuts maybe to go around the full bezel I'm not sliding the graver but I'm cutting into the grave into the metal you could see this little curl being cut it looks pretty darn good oh my goodness I'm looking at the back of the camera I can see it's quite a, a significant amount of metal being removed although this is in silver but if this is in 14 18 or 22 karat gold don't lose that little piece of metal as dollars in your pocket probably enough to go on a vacation well maybe and I'm cutting all the way around and you can see my fingers really tight on the blade the, uh, the bottom part of the blade is resting on my thumb there I can't see what I'm doing I'm going to remove it I'm just going to 
even out or even it out because when a graver hits the facets it gives a bit of a shattered effect on the bezel wall so the second time around you're just skimming the surface without digging into it as much as you would on the first glance. What you're aiming for is to have a nice complete wide cut right from the facets of the stone to the topmost part of the bezel wall. So that's quite a quite amount of metal that you'll be cutting. Remember, you cannot achieve this just by hammering and using a pumice wheel. It's a symbiotic relationship. You need this graver as much as you need to get the ring done. One cannot be done without the other. You need to have a bright cut. Now learn how to handle the graver. As you can see in this particular graver, it's not really that long. And here, you can see the number two, I'm not lying to you, it's number two graver. You can use a number one. I would use that maybe for a gypsy setting, but for this heavy duty work, I will be using a number two graver. It has a wider swath. I should say, it cuts a wider swath. And when I feel that all the bright cutting is done nicely, I'm just gonna go over to touch more. Now you can see, oh my goodness. You can see that bright cut. Now what I'm gonna do now is uh, stop the camera and uh, put in my uh, uh, my flat wheel and just touch up outside the wall. There you go. I think you can see it all now. A bit of dust on it. You can see that nice clean cut all the way around. Your main objective is to have it round all over. Is that hard to do? Yes. Out of 10 being difficulty, I'd say this is about a 25. There's so many things you have to look for. The sharpness of the graver cut, uh, making sure the graver is uh, well positioned and uh, well cutting, cutting nicely. There's a lot of work behind it. Let's stop the film for a minute. 